Welcome to Pivot Tables. I'm Brother Watkins and this is my introductory video. It will be the first video of the module. There will be several videos in this module. But this one is designed to show you a workbook that I have created to hold all of the information that you need to prepare for the Pivot Table examination. Please note that the opening uh, tab of this on the bottom here that I'm showing you, Pivot Table Introduction, is the name of a worksheet. Excel's workbooks are given a name that's up at the top. You need to understand the difference between a workbook and a worksheet to understand the, uh, the text that I provide here. Each tab along the bottom is another worksheet and is as functional as all the worksheets that you have created. When you create a pivot table, the program will automatically put it on its own worksheet. So as you practice and move through this module, you're going to be creating a lot of worksheets. And let me show you what that looks like uh, quickly. If I'm in product sales data and I create a pivot table, a sheet pops up that says sheet one at the bottom right here. And that will contain your pivot table. If you wish to give it a name, like Practice Table A1 or Practice Table A2, you would right-click on the mouse while pointing on that tab, and you can give the tab a name, you can give the tab a color, uh, you can do any of the various formatting steps that you might want to do. Now I just realized that when I uh, did that formatting step, you couldn't see it. So let's uh, go back, I'm going to right-click on it, and hopefully you should be able to see that uh, full menu here where you can insert, delete, rename. And it's important to learn your way around this function because as you create these tables, uh, let me put it back here, what you're going to end up with are a lot of tabs. Let's do a uh, quick table, pivot table. And that sheet two now comes up because I just created a sheet one. And you're going to need how to learn, or you're going to need to learn how to delete these. Put your cursor on sheet two, right click on it, and just delete it. And that brings you back to the beginning. Now, a word of introduction. I've designed this first worksheet to be printed out. When you print it, you should see a, a complete page that you can thumb through. I've put page breaks in it. And that will give you all of the information that you need to work through this module. It's a very good idea to print it out first so that you can make notes and that you have it handy. And what's best uh, is that you're not clicking back and forth. Just a brief uh, overview of what kind of sheets are contained in this workbook. There's the introduction, which will have the text. And by the time you get this, we'll have links here on the uh, right-hand side to each of the videos that I'm preparing. Um, use this as kind of your home base. The next tab is a red tab. Red tabs are data files. You cannot produce a pivot table without a data file. The whole purpose of pivot tables is to use this data and you'll see here that there are already some 287 lines of data provided. And you're going to use this table which is called product sales data to complete the next, um, I believe there were, uh, let's check, seven tables that you're going to build from this product sales data. An example of each table you are asked to learn is found in the green tabs. And as you go through, you'll see these tables. They may look a little bit different by the time you get to them, but you will have that uh, example for you to double check and make sure that you're doing it in the fashion uh, that you need to in order to get the full points on the test. So back to the introduction. Uh, pivot tables is a different kind of thinking about computer operations than you may have encountered. The pivot table uh, is a patented device that was designed to allow users to manipulate large databases. You're going to be uh, working with fields of data, not just individual variables. Uh, that idea 
uh, is a very powerful one. Uh, in fact, if you go to Instructure, I have a link for you to follow. You can actually see the patent that was granted to Microsoft for this feature. But what you need to understand is that you're manipulating a data field. Let's take a look at the data field. The category is given. Uh, beverages here uh, changes down to condiments and it's listed in alphabetical order. Pivot tables are required to be consistent. I haven't thrown you an inconsistent table because at this point it doesn't do you any good to uh, encounter a problem like that. A consistent data table has no spaces in it. It has consistent data, for example, in column A, which is titled category, and the title becomes part of the table. All of the items in column A uh, fit the category. You don't accidentally go from beverages, condiments, to a number. Uh, that's consistent data. And it's your job as the uh, person in charge of a spreadsheet to ensure that your data is consistent. In this module we're learning to manipulate the data, but I want you to constantly remember that it's your responsibility to make sure that the source of your reports is always consistent and accurate. So take a moment to see here you have a data table with one, two, three, four types of data in it. You can see that this data is provided by quarter. So it would be impossible to extract from this table a precise date for this uh, category and product. The data was not collected for that. In this table, all they've done is given you a combined sales uh, in quarter one for this product. So the object is for you to know the data before you try to start using it. Uh, too many students just jump right in, they start manipulating this, and then they run into trouble because they're trying to do some kind of report that's not supported by the data. Uh, let's go to another data file. Let's look at the order reports data. In this file, you have order IDs, product ID, product, unit price, quantity, discount, and extended price, which is a total of seven variables. And the pivot table program will take them all in. And you're going to be able to produce reports based on only these items. So what you don't have in this table anywhere are dates. So I can tell you how much was sold, I can tell you how much it sold for on a unit basis, but I can't tell you when. Again, you have to be familiar with the data you're trying to manipulate before you go to a report. Let's go over to customer reports data, which is the third of four uh, data fields we give you. Uh, again, this data is given in such a way that if I were to ask you for the customer's full name, you wouldn't be able to do it because the customer is referred to as a five-letter code. You've, if you've looked at your data before you begin, you'll know that. You'll also realize that the data is organized by quarters. There's no date information that you can extract. Finally, we have a salesperson reports. This table does provide you with uh, an order date that corresponds to each ID and amount. So it would be possible in this table to do such things as sort out which of these salespeople are from the US and which are from the UK. You can do that because you know there's a country field attached to each individual line of data. It's consistent. You could also do date ranges and searches on dates because you know that each line of this data has a date provided. And you could tell me the full name of the salesperson rather than some uh, abbreviation because you see the data. Uh, in, in review, the object of manipulating data is to understand what you're trying to do with it. Uh, you, have to, you have to have the idea in mind before you sit down and do the pivot table. So let's go back to the introduction. You've made a copy of this file. You have it in hand. You can use it to take notes. Uh, it's a good idea also to put this whole spreadsheet on a thumb drive so that if you mess it up or if you erase something that you want to look back and trust me it will happen, uh, you have a copy. Uh, we've talked about becoming familiar with the data. Let me tell you another tip that successful students have um, told to me and that is as we do this kind of teaching 
I'm going to have to list it in some order, and I choose to list it sequentially. We start with A, A1, A2, and as you see here, there is each table, and each one adds a little bit of extra functionality. Starts easy, becomes increasingly complex, until you get to the very bottom one, which involves calculated fields. And for those of you who have been patient and are watching this video, I'm going to give you a clue right now that calculated field is going to be on the test. That is one table you have to have mastered. You have to be able to do that one. So of the 24, I can only test you on about 8 of them, but because you've uh, borne with me on this video, I'm going to give you that tip. Know your calculated field table. So each, each of these tables goes and adds a little bit of functionality as it progresses. In order to practice and make sure that you understand it, uh, I suggest that you work through them once you've done an initial study and review, that you practice them in random order. Any, any one of these 24 tables from A1 to D9 and just pick it up, read the description, and then try to produce it. Don't just start at the beginning at midnight the night before the test and watch all of these videos. You're going to see that there's 24 separate videos. I do one video for each one of these tables and I explain what's going on so that you can reproduce the, um, the skill that's identified in the video. The toughest part about reproducing a pivot table is simply knowing where the menu or where the function is in the system. We've now, uh, I'm doing this on Excel 2010, so the, the version is all complete. Everything is going to be the same as you're going to see on the lab computers and in the testing center. But don't underestimate how tricky it is to find some of this functionality. Uh, they they're working on this is a very strong uh, and popular aspect of their program but it has evolved over time and sometimes it's hard to find where you format this or, or how you look for the top five or how you put in a subtotal uh, those are the kind of things that distinguish someone who understands pivot tables from someone who doesn't work with a friend uh, find a study partner somebody who can uh, take half of the tables, learn them, and then you take half of the tables, and then you teach each other. Uh, it, it will be very helpful to you to have somebody working with you as you go through this, because there's a lot of material to cover, and unfortunately it's easy to get confused. So I find it helps to have two people looking at it and trying to discern what it is that you're trying to learn. That's the introduction. Let me just uh, briefly show you what's going to happen. You're going to go to a red tab. You can't, build a, you can't build a pivot table unless you're on a red tab. And all pivot tables are created the same way. You go to the Insert ribbon, and on the far left it says Pivot Table. And you click on it. The computer automatically selects a range. What it, the computer is looking for is a consistent um, with no blanks, range full of data that has headers at the top of each column. If you are uh, linking to an outside database, you can tell the program to use external data, and it will default to a new worksheet. That's what we uh, went over at the beginning. It'll create a sheet one, and uh, if you do that, you said okay, it'll probably create sheet three because I've already done this three times. Yes and you'll see this, uh, this picture. There's a way to drop fields here. Um, that was kind of the drag and drop interface. That's no longer the active uh, idea that Microsoft is using, so we're going to use the field list, which is this section over on the right. And what you do is you choose a field, such as a category and the product, and you can move them they can either be on a row or on a column. So here we have a category and product on rows, and you can move the field, not just a variable, but the entire field around. Now I've created category on the left with a monstrous amount of columns. That would make an unworkable report. So let's just bring that product back down, and it's subordinate now to category and there it is. It lists each product 
by the category and all I've done is move things around and if I want to find out finally what my sales are I just click on sales and it looks like uh, the computer has defaulted it over to the sum values and there's a report it needs to be formatted needs to be prepared but when you get into trouble with pivot tables trouble will come in one of two ways first kind of trouble is your field list disappeared you're here trying to make your pivot table and you don't see all of the information that you need in order to do the pivot table all that means is that your active cell is outside the range of the table so if it disappears don't panic just click inside the table anywhere and it pops back into view if your table doesn't look right if for some reason it's it's backwards or it's just a complete mess you, you, it's not making any sense just unclick your fields start over don't fight with the software now that's our introduction remember to get rid of a practice sheet you right click on the tab below and delete yes there's your introduction to read uh, I look forward to uh, walking you through each of these and I want you to remember that once you understand pivot tables you're no longer a beginner user of this software in fact you have some pretty strong tools in your tool chest that can make you look very good to to potential employers when you see how fast you can manipulate this data it becomes really um, I think satisfying to uh, to have that ability and to know that you can do this so good luck um, don't delay and I look forward to working with you uh, through these videos